lesson is uh, number nine in our Judges series, and we're going to begin at, at uh, Judges 17, and uh, uh, the plan is to look at Judges 17, chapter 17, and 18. Uh, today's date is uh, February the uh, 25th, 2024. But growing grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. 2 Peter 3.18 Now, the last, uh, last, four, uh, uh, last two weeks, we covered uh, the story of Samson, but uh, I had just a few things I wanted to say uh, at the very end last week. We just kind of ran out of time, so I'd like to start with that today. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, you're not going to believe this, but we're going to start in, uh, we're, we're in the book of Judges, but I'd like for you to go to the book of Hebrews first. And uh, uh, Joe was also, I was uh, just uh, uh, amazed. This is just the way that God works. Uh, I had some words to say about the faith chapter. And you mentioned Hebrews 11, 1, uh, or 11, 6. One of those verses in chapter 11, uh, which I'm so glad you did. So we're going to get like a double dose today. Uh, the 11th, the 11th, uh, passage uh, or the 11th chapter of Hebrews is nicknamed the faith chapter. Uh, now notice that the author uh, and we don't know the name of the human author uh, but it begins uh, he begins the chapter with a definition of faith and uh, again Joe shared some of that with us but but uh, we got a little bit more so Douglas would you uh, would you read Hebrews 11 1 for us please and if you have any comments please Please, please feel free to add those. Okay. More, more grace, middle grace. Yes, uh, Hebrews chapter eleven, starting at verse one. My, my, my. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm gonna elaborate on that at the bottom down there. Thank you, Brother Joe, everything you said, too. The evidence of things not seen. We was talking, the guy was talking about how God tests us through faith. And Harry, bro, Harry brought up something, and uh, I'm going to share on it because I've had a couple of experiences with that. Uh, about the guy that come there and wanted something to eat at the fire department when he was working and uh, went to look for him to get him a soda. He was nowhere in sight. But at Walmart here on the parkway, not this year, not last year, but I don't know what year it was, but this lady heard me talking and, want, and asked me, son, will you have prayer with me? And I prayed with that lady in the parking lot. And I looked for that lady. That lady was nowhere in sight. Wasn't up on a car. Wasn't inside of a car. And I looked in the sky. Because I said, wow, well, who was that? Why, who? Where did that come from? But, and then, after that experience, you know, or the same chapter, in verse, chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he has and that he is a reward of, of them that diligently seek him. I had another experience, you know, the same at the same Walmart. And uh, they was inside, we well, heard me talking, witnesses. I witnessed my voice loud, I can't help that. And she waited and she saw him. Are you a minister? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I'm going through something, will you have prayer with me? I said, yes, ma'am, folks. Uh, delay can be fatal. Delay, I forget. And uh, she said, let's have prayer right now. So we prayed inside of Walmart. I looked for that lady. She wasn't nowhere in sight. So I, I love those verses, but without faith, 
it is impossible to please to him. Well, you know, so I, I'm grateful you guys was sharing that about a week or two weeks ago. And I, I couldn't get in because, you know, every time I wanted to say something, someone else said something. But I've had those experiences. And I'm still having them right now because people still, you know, ask me to have prayer with them. And uh, I tell them, yeah, of course, let's do it right now. So it's just a journey, uh, guys. And I thank you, Brother Rusty. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Joe. Thank God for it, holy word, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Doug, so much. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Anybody got anything they'd like to comment on about, about what Doug has shared with us? Wow, it was great. Yeah. All right, well, substance is the realization of God's plan for the future, that we know that he has a plan for the future. Evidence is confidence that God can perform what he said he will do. You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't say he's going to do so-and-so and then forget about it. Not like some of us do, you know, <laughs> from time to time. Uh, like, uh, you know, kind of like Douglas said, you know, delay can be fatal because we forget. But God doesn't. Now, in verse 7 of Hebrews 11, Noah is praised for his faith. In verse 8, Abraham is praised for his faith. Uh, Moses' faith is highlighted in verse 23. This is on Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. But listen, if you will, to verses 32 and 34. This is Hebrews 11, 32 uh, through 34. It says, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of, uh, to tell of Gideon and of Barak, uh, two names should be familiar, and of Samson and of Jephthah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Of course, that's a reference to Daniel. Verse 34, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, uh, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. All right, so all these things are done through faith. We have to have faith uh, from day to day. Now, the author winds up the chapter, Hebrews 11, with two verses, 39 and 40, applauding the individual's name for their faith in looking ahead. Now, none of the Old Testament saints received the promises as we, members of the church, members of, uh, of, of Christ's New Testament church, have received by believing in Christ's past sacrifices. We look back to the cross. But you see, belief is belief and faith, same thing. Belief is the requirement for salvation, whether before the cross or after the cross. Or after the cross. Belief is the key. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything you'd like to add to this? Oh, if not, let's go to Judges uh, chapter 17. Now, these uh, final five chapters of Judges contain vivid illustrations of how the Israelites abandoned the God who had delivered them from slavery in Egypt. They didn't completely abandon him by words, but their actions revealed their apostasy. Apostasy is a falling away, a turning away from a previous commitment. Now, as as recently as the last chapter of Joshua, we're going to read a few uh, few uh, verses there in just a minute, but as recently as the last chapter of Joshua, the people of Israel said they were committed, committed to the one true God. Now go back to Joshua 24, the last chapter of, of Joshua, uh, and Mike, if you would read uh, Joshua 24, verses 22 through 24, please. Okay. <clears throat> reading from the English Standard Version. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, 
the Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. Amen. So those words should be should be ringing in their ears, you know, from this point forward. Uh, but we know from our study that did what that wasn't true. Now that is how it should have been. It was God's plan that His chosen people, the Jews, the the Israelites, who just come out of Egypt, uh, this chosen people should serve and obey Him. Now, back when Moses and Aaron were calling on Pharaoh, you remember that in Exodus, the book of Exodus, the request was to let my people go so they can serve me, God would say through Moses. Now, Lamar, if you would, the same chapter, Joshua 24, would you read verse 31, please? Okay. Yes. Go up in the background. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's been on there ever since we got on this morning. Uh, And I, I don't know... What to do? What to do about it? Okay. But thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, the more we, yeah. Uh, uh, Twenty four thirty one. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is from the Living Bible. Okay. Israel. Israel obeyed the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the older men who had personally witnessed the amazing deeds which the Lord had done for Israel. That's 31. Amen. Thank you. This, yeah. this, this, this soon after, after uh, Joshua died. Mm-hmm. Went, yes. It. Yeah, that's right, uh, Lamar. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm to get too fast, <laughs> too anxious, I guess, sometimes. But uh, we had read this verse, uh, of course, before when we were in Joshua, and we made the comments at the time. You know, well, that was so sad. Such a uh, uh, such a dramatic difference between uh, the verses that Mike read us uh, in uh, uh, the earlier. Uh, verses uh, 24 the Lord our God we will serve his voice we will obey well they wanted to do that but then Lamar read just a few verses later that uh, they served until uh, until Joshua passed away and the elders that lived during Joshua's time so it was a temporary thing it seems like all right but these last verses of, of Joshua uh could have been written by Joshua's assistant or perhaps even by Eliezer, the, the priest. We don't know because it mentions Joshua's death, so he probably didn't write it himself. Uh, but now, right at the beginning of Judges, it's recorded that the Canaanites and all the other ites were not, were not utterly destroyed. You remember that phrase? I know we talked, made a, big, uh, a lot of that because it's, uh, it's written several times. Uh, but apparently the Israelites did not realize, perhaps they didn't care, that disobedience to God and refusal to follow His law would bring serious consequences. It still does. Now, we're seeing it today. The war between Israel and Hamas is a direct result of these uh, earlier Israelites ignoring God's instruction to utterly destroy the people of Canaan. Yes, God showed them, uh, the Israelites, he showed them mercy and grace by raising up the judges, but the, the consequences of their sin remained. That's still true today, too. True today, too. Right. Anybody got a comment on that? Uh, Rusty, yes, sir. You had talked about uh, Samson back in uh, Judges 16. Yes, sir. And in line of faith and obedience, because obedience to God is faith in God, mm-hmm. Samson, you know, his strength had not been in his hair, but it was in God's power, mm-hmm. which Samson had only as long as he clung faithfully to that symbol of his dedication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happened is Samson traded the Lord's power for his own pleasure, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. life of significance for a moment of satisfaction, mm-hmm. and the Lord for Delilah. Mm-hmm. So this is what happens, and 
you know, the whole book of Judges is about disobedience because when you are obedient to the Lord, you're showing your faith in God. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else wanted to say something too. Uh, Chaplain, was it you or someone? Okay. So Jim made the same comment that I was going to make, you know, in terms of uh, that. Yes, sir. So Jim made the comment that I was going to uh-huh. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, in Judges 17, all right, the, the main character of of this chapter and the major part of 18 is an Ephraimite, Ephraimite uh, named Micah, M-I-C-A-H. Now, this Micah is not to be confused with the prophet Micah. The prophet Micah's book is among the 17 prophetical books of the Old Testament. He was a contemporary of the prophet Isaiah. Now, if you remember when Herod the Great inquired of the chief priests uh, as to the location of Jesus' birth, remember the wise men asked him, you know, where, uh, uh, asked, you know, they came to Jerusalem, and so Herod asked the, the chief priest, well, uh, uh, where, what does the... Uh, uh, what does the scripture say about where Jesus is going to be born? Well, when Herod the Great inquired the chief priests as to the location of Jesus' birth, they referred to the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, which says he would be born uh, in, uh, in Bethlehem. And then Matthew 2, 1 says that he was. Now, this Micah of Judges that we're talking about today surely did what was right in his own in his own eyes. And you know, we've seen that phrase before, and we'll see it again at the very end of Judges. Now he must have been a pretty shady character because the first thing we see about him is that he stole 1,100 pieces of silver from his own mother. But rather than reprimanding her son for his thievery, she said, May you be blessed uh, by the Lord, my son. And the lady said she was saving the money to make a carved image. Boy, there's a you know lot in there. Uh, <laughs> now that is a direct violation of commandment number two. Thou shalt have, thou shalt make no uh, molten images, graven images. Now, however, she had second thoughts and used only two hundred of the eleven hundred pieces of silver for a carved image. When he gave her the eleven hundred pieces of silver back. Well, she just used 200, used the other 900, I guess, for something else, you know, more important. Uh, but uh, that just the fact that she used some of the money for, a, uh, for an image uh, says a lot to us. So Micah had this image and other assorted idols in his house. Also, he made one of his sons a priest. He just decided, well, you know, come here, Tommy, and I'm going to make you a priest, you know, uh, or whatever his name was. Uh, now here's another major problem. Priests were to be from the tribe of Levi. There's no indication here he's from the tribe of Levi. In fact, it says specifically in the beginning verses, he's an Ephraimite. He's the, of the tribe of Ephraim, uh, jo one of Joseph's sons. Now there happened to be an actual Levite traveling through town. When Micah met him, Micah hired him to be a priest over his idols. Now, the scripture doesn't tell us what, what uh, happened to the son who was made a priest, but uh, Micah thought he had it made when he act, had an actual Levite to be a priest. Now, in Judges 17, Annette, if you would, read verse 13 for us. Judges 17, 13, please. I bet the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Amen. 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 Thank you for reading that. So now, all this reminds me of the foolishness we see today of people appointing themselves as apostles and so forth. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I heard somebody say one time, it just kind of stuck with me, he said, you know, if you got enough money, you can go on online and somebody will send you uh, a certificate that says you're an apostle. You know, so uh, so you can, you can buy your way in. You know? <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, we see things like that. And a person can say anything he or she wants, but it doesn't make it so, just because we say it. Uh, or somebody says it. You know, there are people all around us that play the Christian game. You know them, and I know them. Now, where's a person's heart? That's come in, come in, Oh, absolutely. Go right here. Yeah. You know, the problem I have with most church people, <clears throat> the problem that we would see, Paul and I read and count those problems. Mm-hmm. You don't see churches dealing with Roman through Philemon. These are the problems that we see right now. False teachers, false preachers, false people. Peter, all that. that. Mm-hmm. We don't spend it these books, the Pauline books. If we mm-hmm. said the Pauline books, we could deal with the issue. Mm-hmm. We no, most churches do not deal with that. Right. They deal only in the Old Testament in terms of, because what happened is, they give us a background. We were born again, give us a background of how the Israelites messed up, <laughs> how God corrected them. Mm-hmm. But now we not most of them deal with that because that's a problem that we can deal with. Oh, most of these problems you see right now, Paul had already encountered these problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We said the Paul the gospel, we can deal with these false teachers, false teachers, false church folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. We know who they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the knowledge of knowledge of the word. You're, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. That's exactly right. Anybody else? Okay. okay, well, now, where's a person's heart? We're kind of left off now. How does he act? How does a person act and talk when he gets away from the church building? That, Chaplain, that's exactly what you're talking about. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll act one way for three, four hours on Sunday, but then they don't act that way again until the next Sunday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul dealt with it. He sure did. Especially the Corinthian church. You're exactly right. Now, uh, so is Jesus just a good luck charm like Micah's hired preacher? I don't know. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The devil do not want to get found gospel. Mm hmm. Yeah. Harry, it sounded like an echo of what you called and told me about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Sure is. All right. Anything, any, any other uh, comments on chapter 17 before we move on to 18? Okay, it's kind of an odd, kind of an odd chapter, but it kind of it carries over into eighteen, and we're going to see that. Now, uh, Judges eighteen, chapter eighteen is a perfect and very clear example of the problems the Israelites caused themselves by not utterly destroying the Canaanites as they had been directed by Moses and by Joshua, and most notably by God Himself through those two individuals, Mo- Moses and Joshua. Now, the tribe of Dan. D-A-N, descendants of one of the twelve sons of Jacob, received its allotment of land on the coast of the Mediterranean between Judah and Ephraim. If you look at your map, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, on the coast of the Mediterranean between Judah and Ephraim. Now, when you look at your map, you'll see it was right in the stronghold of the Philistines. Today, we call it the Gaza Strip. And where's all the turmoil going on right now? Okay. All right. Go to uh, uh, go to Joshua again. This time, go to Joshua nineteen. Joshua nineteen. And uh, uh, I'm going to start reading at uh, start reading at verse forty. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how far I'm going to go. Let's see. But Joshua nineteen, verse forty. All right. The seventh lot uh, came out for the tribe. This is when the land was being divided. 
Uh, the, son, uh, the son of Lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families. And the territory of their inheritance was Zorah and Esteol. And I'm not going to read all those names, but Zorah and Esteol, Esteol uh, should be familiar to you because Manoah, the father of Samson, was a Danite living in Zorah when the angel of the Lord appeared to his wife. If you remember, you remember that part of the Samson story, the very beginning of Samson's story. Uh, then I'm jumping down to 47. And the border of the children of Dan went beyond these because the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem, which is an ancient name for Laish, and we're going to talk about that more in a minute, and took it, and they struck it with the edge of the sword, sword took possession of it, and dwelt in it. Uh, and they called Leshem Dan, or Laish Dan, after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan according to their families, these cities with their villages. Now, you're probably familiar with the term from Dan to Beersheba. I, well, that Dan's the very north. Beersheba is the very south of Israel. This is about almost 200 miles apart. So that phrase from Dan to Beersheba means the whole land of Israel. That's what it's talking about. Okay. Uh, uh, now, let's see, in Judges, I want to point out one thing. See, Judges uh, 31, let's see. Um, oh, okay. Uh, in verse 46, Joshua 19:46, you see the name Joppa the very, at the very end of that verse, verse 46, Joppa. All right, that's the Joppa where Peter raised Tabitha in the book of Acts and also where Peter was when he saw the sheet of, sheet of animals that came down and God said, don't let anything that I made that I've made, you know, don't call it unclean, if you remember that, that instant in Acts 10. That's the same Joppa. All right, now Joshua 19.47 just read it. So it's evident that Dan was not satisfied with their allotment, so they went north to Laish, which Leshem and Laish, same thing, took it over and renamed it Dan. Uh, Dan is now in the country of Lebanon. All right, that should ring a bell too. Dan is now in the country of Lebanon. That's where Hezbollah is headquartered today. All right. Now, go to Judges, the first chapter. All right, Judge, this is, this is, this is all background, but it's very important that we, that we understand this before we go ahead. All right, Judges 1. I'm going to read 34 through 36. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains, for they would not allow them to come down to the valley. So they couldn't, the, the Danites could not uh, take over or did not take over the land that they were supposed to. And the Amorites were determined to dwell in Mount Harris and Agiline and in uh, Shelbim. Yet when the strength of the house of Joseph became greater, they were put under, uh, under tribute. Now the boundary of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim from Selah and Upper, and that was to the, to the south. Now, the mountains of verse 34 must have been the mountains of Ephraim as that tribe was immediately to the north of Dan. And you'll see that on your map. The house of Joseph in verse 35 must be Ephraim. Also, unless the meaning is that uh, Manasseh joined with Ephraim. You remember Manasseh and Ephraim were both sons of Joseph. Now remember, those two were the sons of Joseph and technically grandsons to Jacob. But he said when he blessed them that he was going to take them as his sons in Genesis 49. Now here is more disobedience. The Amorites should have been utterly destroyed rather than made slaves. The boundary of verse 36 is way down south to Edom below the Dead Sea. And Selah, by the way, Selah, which is mentioned in verse 36, was the ancient name of Petra. You might be familiar with Petra, you might not be, but many believe Petra is where the Jews will go when the abomination of desolation takes place as described by Jesus in the Olivet Discourse of Matthew 24. So all these connections are just just unbelievable, except we know, we know that it's the truth because it's in God's Word. Now all that was just an introduction to chapter 18, but I believe very important. So, uh, 
So let's go ahead and read the scripture. And Wally, if you would, uh, read uh, Judges 18, verses 1 through 6, please. Okay. Okay. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Also in those days, the tribe of Dan was searching for a territory for their own to live in. There's no permanent territory had been assigned to them among the uh, tribes of Israel up to that point. The Denites sent five men from their whole clan, strong men from Zorah and Eshetal, to spy on the land and explore it. They told them, go explore the land. So they went to Ephraim Highland as far as they, uh, in Micah's house, and they spent the night there. When they were in the area of Micah's house, they recognized the accent of a young Levite. They turned in there and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in these parts? What is there for you here? Micah has done a lot for me, he replied to them. He hired me to be his personal priest. <laughs> They said to him, ask for an answer from God so we can know whether we'll be successful on this trip that we've taken. The priest replied to them, go in peace. The Lord is watching over you on this trip you've taken. Hmm. Amen. Wow. Wow. You know, that was very, uh, very interesting. Well, I thank you for reading that. And uh, what really caught my attention was in verse... Uh, uh, verse three, uh, when your your translation says that they recognize the accent of the young Levite, whereas the New King James I'm reading from it just says they recognize the voice, which kind of confused me. You know that uh, they would know that particular person, but the accent that makes a lot more sense that they recognize the accent so from from that country, yeah. That's what's great about having the different translations we have. You know, see so much. But uh, 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 what we uh, see here is what we read about or we read about before. The Danites didn't conquer their land allotment, so they sent out five men. That's why they didn't have a permanent allotment, as it said in Wally's translation. Uh, so they sent out five men to find a place more suitable and more to their liking. Uh, they said, well, you know, they didn't really like where they were signed and they didn't want to run out the Amorites. They just wanted to go somewhere else. Well, the group of five went to the mountains of Ephraim. We talked about those before and stayed with Micah. So here's Micah of chapter 17. Now, verse 3 says they recognized the voice of the accent of the hired priest. And when they found out he was a priest, they asked him to ask God if their mission would be successful. He told them, sure, sure, it'll be great. Well, they were like many self-acclaimed Christians. And uh, uh, Chaplain, you don't like this because it goes right along with what you were saying before. They're like, like many self-acclaimed Christians today. They're not really interested in what God has to say. They just want him to bless what they've already decided to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Hey, yes, sir. As you know, like he was explaining, this chapter began by noticing there was no king in Israel at this time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and much of the spiritual and political confusion of this time was due to the lack of that ununified leadership. They had no leadership in that nation at that time. And that was all the confusion was going on. Sure. And uh and they needed someone to bridge that gap for them. And we will find out the gap between having a judge to them having the monarchy, which we'll we'll inter we'll be introduced to us in first Samuel mm -hmm. according to Numbers twenty six forty three. And, you know, the tribe of Dan had over 64,000 men. However, they still was unable to occupy 
that the carry show that was allotted to them because of the opposition and you we already went over there, the Amorites and the Philistines. Mm -hmm. I mean they it, but it also seemed they had the opposition to them, but when you read a lot of them was what we say, brothers or cousins and they had opposition just themselves as well as the ones they were supposed to kill. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, listen to that they were saying. See, each tribe had a priesthood. Right. And, 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 see, and then and what happened is, like, a lot of times the priesthood was, was, was cooking. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times, so, so, so you, you had, same thing we got right now. We have the same kind of problems mm -hmm. right now because we have these folk, phony preachers, phony church people who are leading people at the same time. Um, that's the issue that we have mm -hmm. because of, of their leadership. We're not allowing God to uh, direct them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're doing like Harry was saying. You, we're seeing a few men, I mean, every day, like we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Showing their light, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not a light no more. Right. We, we, we're blending it in. Yeah. And we're supposed to be separate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. So biblical. Yeah. You're so good at uh, application. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. I found a footnote on this in the uh, beginning of chapter 8, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lord said that basically the tribe got frustrated in their attempts to take a, uh, in possession of their allotted inheritance. In other words, they grew impatient. They, they wanted things right then, so right. they made their own plans, and rather than waiting on the Lord, they moved on to something else. Yeah. And that's what the uh, chapter's talking about right now. A lot of people go to church because they're wanting their plans fulfilled and not wanting to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very well put. That's exactly right. Well, the spies uh, here, uh, starting verse 7, uh, the spies went north to Laish. Remember, uh, I, I mentioned that Laish is the same as Leshem, if your translation says Leshem like mine does. Same place. But note the Sidonians. Uh, Sidonian. Si Sidon, S-I-D-O-N, was a major city of Phoenicia, which is basically today's Lebanon. And if you look at your map, you'll see Sidon right on the coast of the Mediterranean. 
You may recall Jesus speaking of Tyre and Sidon as recorded by Matthew and Luke, and we won't go back into that right now, but he did mention Tyre and Sidon of Phoenicia, which is today's Lebanon. Now, the five returned to Zorah and Eshtel and told their people, well, we can take this land we have found in the north. Uh, uh, an army of six, so an army of 600 men began their journey to Laish and stopped on the way at Micah's house. So here's, here's Micah again. All right. The Danites, the people of Dan, then stole the idols which were in Micah's house and convinced the make-believe priest to go with them. Now, he obviously had no loyalty to Micah and figured out right away his paycheck would increase considerably by being priest for all the Danites rather than just one household. Well, Micah and his neighbors chased after the army of the Danites to try to recover their idols. The Danites, of course, refused to give them back, and they threatened to kill Micah and the others if they persisted. And this is all in the scripture. I'm just kind of summarizing it here uh, for us. So Micah went back home, priestless, without a priest, and without his precious idols, which he shouldn't have had to start with. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, now, 27 through 31. Jack, if you would, read those verses for us, please. This is still in Judges 18, 27 through 31. Okay. So they took the, so they took the things Micah had made, and the priests who had belonged to him, and went to Laish, to a people quiet and secure. And they struck them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. There was no deliverer because it was far from Sidon, and they had no ties with anyone. It was in the valley that belonged to Beth Riah, so they rebuilt the city and dwelt there. And they called the name of the city Dan after the na after the name of Dan, their father, who was born to Israel. However, the name of the city formerly was Laish. Then the children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image, and Jonathan the son of Gershon, the son of Manasseh, and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up for themselves Micah's carved image, which he made, all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go right here. I just want to be a teacher. You'd be surprised. Like, for example, like, a lot of people, like in slave times, mm -hmm. some of us call idle stuff. And then when you become born again, a lot of times they bring their born again stuff with the witchcraft stuff. And then, and then what happened is they confuse the people. Yeah, sure. And then you cannot, God, he said he's a jealous God. So what happened is, a lot of people right now, they're bringing in their own stuff. But they're taught one way, for example, like, suppose you were taught about Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And you become born again. Somebody in your family will kind of bring in some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you got to be firm not to let them bring their stuff in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll hold... But that's why you shouldn't be on the video. When you marry somebody who's a Muslim and you're a Christian, you don't have children will have some problems. Oh sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah. So true. Not yeah. only that, Chaplain, you ain't gotta go back to that. You can look at some religions believe in speaking in tongues. Uh, you gotta be saved to speak in tongues. That ain't what the Bible says. As that's a matter of fact, I had a bishop to ask me once, are you saved? I said, no, he asked me, do I believe in God? I said, yes. He said, are you saved? I said, yes. He said, do you speak in tongues? I said, I believe in it, but I've never done it. He said, well, you are not saved until you can speak in tongues. You're not saved. I said, the word don't say that. And he said, but I can teach you how to speak in tongues. And I was wrong, but before I know that, I told her, man, you talk like a fool. How can you teach me what God is? A gift of God. <laughs> and I was sure, right? a fool. I went, I you was a fool. 
But it sort of took me out, took me back. So how can you teach me to speak in tongues when that's a gift from God? So needless to say, I was dating a girl at his church. She and I sort of broke up after that because I called her pastor. But it was okay because I shouldn't have been mixed with them no way because what they believe in. Mm -hmm. she, told me, she taught me how to speak in tongues. No, he didn't. If you think you're speaking in tongues, that little jitter jab or whatever you're saying, if God didn't give it to you, you are not speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. He does. He does. Now, so these people... Mm -hmm. Captain, you know who the author of confusion is, don't you? Yes, sir. Hallelujah is the author of confusion. <laughs> and John chapter 8, he said the devil, he's the author, the father of, of the seven. He's mm -hmm. the father of that. Mm -hmm. Father of lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's exactly right. So these people of Laish were in the land that God had given to Israel. Uh, you know, by the Abrahamic covenant and Moses and Joshua. So the Danites properly, utterly destroyed these people uh, uh, there uh, to take the land. Now, verse 31 names the hired priest who had not been named before. Uh, uh, it seems like it's the same person. But the, the King James Version, and therefore the New King James that Jack and I read from, read, the son of Manasseh. However, some ancient manuscripts read Son of Moses. Now Moses is probably correct because he was Moses was of the Levitical and priestly tribe. Also, we know from Exodus 18.3 that Moses had a son named Gershom. And Gershom is mentioned here in this verse. So it's probably the son of, Mo, uh, son of Moses rather than the son of Manasseh. Now, until the captivity of the land could have been a reference to the Assyrian takeover of the northern kingdom, uh, Israel, in 722 B.C., or it could have been the Philistine capture of the Ark of God that we'll see in 1 Samuel. Uh, uh, Here's already referenced 1 Samuel once this morning. Uh, now, if Samuel wrote Judges, which is highly probable, the latter option would, of course, be the correct one, when the Philistines captured the Ark of God. And we'll We'll see that when we get to First Samuel. They captured the ark. Now, for, verse 31 actually answers the day of captivity question in verse 30. Uh, Shiloh was in the territory of Ephraim, far to the south of Dan. Uh, the fact that the ark was so far away may be part of what they consider to be justification for the Danites worshiping the idols. Now, just, just one last comment. Uh, go to Revelation. Go to the book of Revelation, the very end of the Bible, of course. Revelation chapter 7. Now, in this vision, John saw the 144,000 witnesses, we've talked about four Jewish witnesses, which were to be sealed as the servants of God. Uh, and you, we'll see that in the first four verses. In fact, uh, Verse 4 says, And I heard, John says, And I heard the number of those who were sealed. All right? It was 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel, so 12,000 from 12 tribes. Verses 5 through 8 list the 12 tribes from which 12,000 servants will come. Note that Dan, you look through the list, Dan is not listed. But Manasseh is in his place. Now, many believe that it's because, Scripture doesn't say this, but many believe that it's because of the gross idolatry of Dan that we've just read about. The gross idolatry. And they're omitted from this uh, list of the 144,000 witnesses which will appear during the tribulation. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else got comments? All right. This been very good discussion again today. Yeah. Hey, yes, sir. You're right, because if you lose this now, you never hear about 13. Somebody had to be the leader, 15. Uh-huh. 
Somebody had to be deleted. So what I'm saying is, you all here about 12. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, somebody had to be deleted. So if I had to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at history, like, you'll see 12. Right. 12 disciples. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be about 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and the twelve, of course, sons of Jacob, you know, we read about in Genesis, you know, so they're all listed here except for Dan. And right. The, yeah, right. And so it seems like seems like that's the reason because they went into this gross idolatry with Micah and all this that we've read about in, in these two chapters. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I think God was showing that showing showing that, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Sure. If we continue to sin, you know, like folks are ready to move that born again, they will be brought out. They already brought it out. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. If you're not born again, you're already brought it out. Yeah. Well, and it gets a lot of credence to the you know every man every man did what was right in their own eyes, and you know we see that we see that today. Yeah. You know, do what do what we think is the right thing to do, you know, regardless of what God says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Seems like. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Anybody else? Got eight thirty. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you for being here, and thank you again to those who are joining us via YouTube. It's our prayer that this time together was meaningful to you, and you learned more about God's Word. God alone can save, and He saves through His Son Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Is recorded in Acts 4.12. Right, and let's uh, bow for a uh, closing prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you uh, for letting us get together again today. Lord, thank you for every man who's on this call uh, and uh, everyone who will be influenced uh, perhaps by uh, <clears throat> something that was taught or discussed on this call. Lord, thank you for all that uh, participate uh, with us. And uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, your blessing will be uh, on uh, on all those who are listening in. And especially we pray for the unsaved, Lord, that they receive the free gift of salvation before it's too late. Uh, and uh, Lord, please uh, bring us back together again next week. Uh, and I ask all this in your name.